welcome to Introducing Venn Diagrams Using Attributes. I am really excited about sharing this with you. Students in elementary school are pretty familiar with Venn Diagrams. They use them to compare book characters, historical events, but they haven't really used them often for logic puzzles and maybe not as much for attributes. So I am really excited about sharing this with you. Are you ready? Let's get started. Introducing Venn Diagrams with Attributes. I want to stop and give a special thanks to Blossom and Bee Studio for giving us these attribute graphics. You can find a link to the store in the description. This is really important. No hints. The entire purpose of spending this much time is to really have students discover the importance of a Venn diagram and how you can use it in a different way. So if you have an I can statement or an objective written on the board or posted on your website that includes the words Venn diagram, you are stealing their thinking. You are already telling them the answer. So cover that up take it down, erase it, whatever you need to do so that students don't have any hints about what they are about to do. Now, when I do this in person, I use my class as the universal set. Students love being part of the puzzle. It's very engaging. So just choose three attributes as they're walking in the room, but make sure that one person in the class or more does not have any of those attributes. You might want to warn them in advance, whisper in their ear so that they don't stand up and yell, I didn't get to stand up. So you want to let them know and just choose. Here are some examples of attributes you can choose, but really whatever works for you will work. Now, this is pretty engaging, but it's not always possible. So here's another strategy. You can use objects. And in this case, Blossom and Bee designed some attribute shapes for us that we could use today. So we have different shapes, different colors, and some are wearing hats and some are not. So I would just show this and say, okay, there are three questions. Work with your group, or maybe they're working individually to find the answers to those three questions. Now, they may be thinking, that is so easy and pretty boring, but you can assure them it won't remain easy. Okay, so now you've found out that there are eight stars, 10 hats, and six yellow shapes. So I can just add those together. Eight plus 10 plus six equals 24. Are there 24 shapes? Now they may or may not remember because they didn't count the total number of shapes. So let's look. Hmm. Uh-oh. That's a six by three array. That's only 18 shapes. What's the problem? Why does this not give us the total number? And can we think of a way to organize the shapes that would make it easy to determine all of this information? Students may or may not immediately see that some shapes were counted more than once. Don't tell them. If they think of that, fantastic. If they don't, the next step will help with that. So you can just say, okay, let's sort. If they haven't figured that out, you can say, let's sort. Hmm. All right, so if we're doing this, Give them some that are pretty easy that only go in one category at the beginning, but then you get to this. What about this one? Where would that go? I usually have someone put it here and I'll say, well, okay, it's a star, but it's also wearing a hat. So they move it here and I'll say, well, it's wearing a hat, but it's also a star. And then they're unsure about what to do. You just give them think time. Let them think. Almost every year, I have someone who just does that. 
Hmm. So if that's their response, what questions could you ask to help them decide that that's maybe not the best plan? Well, you could say, okay, if it is a shape, if it is a star, should it be fully inside the star circle? If it's wearing a hat, should it be full? But even if they're not sure about that, okay, well, here's another question. What about this one? That would go in the same place. And what about this one? That would go in the same place. And if you start to put them all on top of each other, can you really tell how many shapes are there? Does that really help with organization? Because you can't really tell how many are there. So, hmm, I don't know, what do you do? And you just give them think time. I used these shapes on the board with first graders, not these exact shapes, but similar. And I had the big plastic circles from hand to mind. They had magnets on the back. And I had a little girl just walk over grab this and just slide it right there and slide that right there. Does that work? It absolutely works. And then they look at that and somebody, that, oh, that's a Venn diagram. I didn't know we could use them in math. It is a Venn diagram. So once you've gotten that far, the students are really able to say, okay, this is how we organize a Venn diagram great you're right a venn diagram is a fantastic tool let's use it together and let's determine where these shapes go now this is where you have to have somebody in your class who has a pretty good sense of humor so i'll pick something such as this yellow oval with a hat now we know it goes right here but when the students, I call on someone and say, where does that go? And he or she will say, it goes in the middle. Oh, right here. No, 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 to the right. Oh, right here, no, down. Oh, right here. And you purposely always point to the wrong place. And when students start to get really frustrated, you say, hey, wait a minute. We need a better way to communicate. How can we communicate? And you can't always just come up to the board and point. Maybe it's digital. We can't always describe. We don't want to use in the hat circle, in the yellow circle, not in the star circle every time. So how can we communicate that? And even young students will come up with labels. Now, if you have middle school or even fourth and fifth grade, they're going to come up with variables pretty quickly. But younger students may say something like, you could put a different shape in every section. Well, you could, but do you want to say the squares go in the triangle? Uh, maybe not. Okay, well, you could put numbers in every section. Well, you could, but do you want to say there are five in, in three? Maybe not. And eventually somebody will come up with letters. Let's use letters. Great idea. So now, how many are in each section? Give them a few minutes. They're practicing their Venn diagram. They come up with an answer. Looks great. Now you and I know there's something missing, but we just let that go and let them figure that out. Does this represent eight shapes that are stars? Does it represent 10 wearing hats and six yellow? They have to figure this out because the one mistake that younger students will often make is to say there are three stars because they only look at this instead of looking at the entire circle. If they're stuck, should you just tell them? Absolutely not. You just ask questions such as, Hmm, okay, there are eight stars. Where do all the stars have to be? Well, they have to be inside the star circle. Does the hat circle or the yellow circle, does that have anything to do with the 
with that question? No. So what if you just took them off? And so students will start to see, oh, everywhere in the star circle, whether those are there or not. So that's a good strategy, but have them explain their reasoning for each one. For older students, you may want to have them write an equation. A plus B plus D plus E equals eight. That's the number of stars. Okay, so that should be our shapes. So we have three plus three plus four plus one plus one plus two plus two equals 16. Oh no! We have 18 shapes. Where did we make a mistake? Or if you have your students as your universal set, you can say, who, who made a mistake? And eventually somebody will say, nobody made a mistake. This person doesn't fit any of those attributes or this shape doesn't belong in any of those categories. Oh. We do have two shapes that are not stars. They're not wearing hats and they're not yellow, but they're still a part of our set. They've got to be inside the universal set. So where do we put them? Outside the circle and we'll give them a label of H. If you're talking about students, you can use their name. Jose, Rachel, we, we love them. We want them to be a part of our class. They just don't fit those categories. So we're gonna put them here. So Venn diagrams are very helpful. We love Venn diagrams. They are a fantastic tool. What other questions can you ask? This is where it gets really interesting and it's a great chance for you to really see if they understand how to interpret the Venn diagram. You could ask questions such as, how many shapes are not yellow? How many shapes are stars that wear, are wearing hats? Notice that second question didn't mention yellow, so it would just have to include both of B and E, because if it doesn't mention yellow, then the yellow circle is not really important in the answer. So you can come up with a lot of great questions to ask your students. Now, what's different about this Venn diagram? So, give them a new one. And sometimes students will say things that are pretty common, like, oh, hats are, are in both of them. The first Venn diagram had ovals, and this one has, or had stars, and this one has ovals. Look at the color, primary colors. Hmm. So, that involves more than one color. And notice, hats was before was on the right and now it's over here. So they start to realize, oh, you can really have whatever label you want for any of the circles. And then give them some time to come up with the answers. And then you can ask some different questions. How many are not wearing hats? How many shapes are a primary color and wearing a hat? Where do you see the answers to these questions in the Venn diagram? So once again, it's important for them to always explain their reasoning. For students who are struggling with this, they may need a more concrete representation. There are PDFs on the website. You can go to amazingminds.com, download them, print them, and you will have sets of shapes for your students or larger ones for you to use to demonstrate. So thank you so much. I would love your feedback. We at Amazing Minds want to know how this worked for you. So please go to any of our social media sites and let us know. Get, show us pictures of students work. Tell us how it went. We are really excited. And now you can participate in some of the Mind Bending Monday puzzles that use Venn diagrams. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and hit subscribe so that you don't miss a single video from Amazing Minds. Thanks again. Have a great day.